One of the genuinely cool reasons to be a motorsport fan is that in a world that still suffers from sexism and bigotry when it comes to female athletes, motorsport is genuinely still one of the most gender-inclusive in the world today, with mixed competition and, generally speaking, equal respect and treatment. The problem has been a matter of inclusion. As we said on the podcast last week, on a grassroots level in the UK, for every woman entering the MSA's Formula 4 Championship, there's 39 men. Whether we want to accept it or not, motorsport is a male-dominated industry on every level, even when we know it probably shouldn't be. As a result of this skewed ratio, whenever a woman does anything significant, it thrusts a greater lens on it, even when she doesn't deserve it. If you want any proof of that, just look at how Carmen Jordan and Adelie Fong got treated on TV and on the internet, despite them doing the exact same job. Which brings, which brings me on neatly to last weekend's IMSA 24 Hours of Daytona. This was the first endurance race I'd ever paid proper attention to, and trust me, it was well worth it. It was an incredible spectacle, and amazingly, one of the stars of the show was Catherine Legg for the Delta Wing, and for many reasons, it was something I genuinely never saw coming. Catherine's now 35 and has been a pro in various forms of motorsport since 2004. She even tested an F1 car in 2005, following in the footsteps of Sarah Fisher. But her career never really reached the dizzying potential she showed as a junior. She was last prominent in Formula E in 2014, where she raced in the opening two rounds for Amlin. But again, never really took off after two 15th placed finishes. And to make matters even more surprising, she was representing the Delta Wing team. A big project with obvious visual differences to try and think outside of the box, but had been laughed and written off for the most part after a poor run of reliability and results. So of course... You bring those two written-off elements together for IMSA's headlining race, and what happens? Magic. The Delta Wing team elected not to qualify, but despite that, and the obvious early carnage of a 50-car grid for a 24-hour race, Leg took the opening stint, and in that time was the fastest combination on track, clawing her way through the field, pulling off some great passes, and eventually leading the race before she handed the car over two and a half hours into the race. And despite the horrendous luck of the Delta Wing team failing to finish due to Imza being ridiculously late with a full course yellow, it was more than clear that the combination of the car's much improved performance and Legs' incredible early triple stint had captivated the viewing public, given the higher amount of Universal Twitter praise and her winning the I Respect Spirit of the Race Award for her efforts voted on by the fans. In the grand scheme of things, there's been a real surge of forward momentum with the campaign to push more women into motorsport. Susie Wolfe's overall impact within F1 is debatable, but without any doubt, she's become an inspiring figure to other women trying to climb the ladder, like Tatiana Calderon, Bitka Visa, and a good deal more. And while Susie never actually raced, she's put in a good name to the Dare to be Different campaign, attempting to inspire the next generation of racers. And while Catherine may be from a few years back, and she's had a bit of a rocky road across her career, her run showed that a female driver in a brilliant field of cars and all-star drivers with the Nick Tandys, Ryan Hunter Rays and Graham Ray Halls of the world on one of the biggest stages in motorsport, that a woman can kick some ass too. And yes, in a perfect world it would never take gender into account and that talent would matter above all else. The reality is, at the moment, that's just a pipe dream. Catherine wasn't just great for a woman on Saturday, she was great. Period. And that, to me, is exactly why her Daytona run was so important.